This is Unit 3 of the regular ed units for the Georgia Department of Education school bus training. In this unit, we're going to talk about driving the bus and basic bus handling characteristics. Our objectives are to identify the effects of velocity, centrifugal force, and inertia on the control of the bus, to understand the effects of friction and gravity on stopping the bus, understanding the stopping characteristics of a school bus and the effects of speed and weight, understand basic handling characteristics of a school bus, and understand how to properly adjust and use the mirrors on your bus. The performance standard will be that the trainee shall be taught and the trainer shall improve and evaluate the trainee's vehicle handling skills. Our topics again will include velocity, centrifugal force and inertia, friction and gravity, braking distance, basic handling characteristics, mirror adjustment, and visual and perceptual skills. Why is this important? So that you understand the natural forces affecting the bus, the effects of friction and gravity and other natural forces when braking, maneuvering the bus successfully, understanding what you see in your mirrors, and overall successful operation of a bus. Okay, in this first section we're going to take time to talk about the natural laws that affect the operation and movement of vehicles. Specifically, we're going to be looking at velocity, centrifugal force, and inertia. Velocity is the word for speed. So when we talk about velocity, what we're really talking about is the speed of the bus. All moving objects have energy in motion, which is known as kinetic energy. The object is going to continue to move until the energy is used up. Most times the speed is changed to friction and heat by applying the brakes. The amount of energy depends upon the speed of the vehicle. When you double your speed, the kinetic energy is multiplied by four times. So for example, if you're driving at 20 miles an hour, you can stop the vehicle at 60 feet, but at 40 miles an hour, it's going to take up to 240 feet to stop. Again, as you double it, you increase fourfold. The key to understand is that velocity, that is speed, is a factor which you can control. And by the way, this exponential increase in the amount of energy and stopping distance really continues at other ways too. So if you increase your speed three times, it takes nine times as long to stop your bus. So if you go from 20 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour, you increase it threefold, you go from 60 feet necessary to stop your bus to 540 feet. Continuing in our discussion of natural laws, let's talk about centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is the force that keeps an object in motion moving in a straight line. In driving a motor vehicle, this force is encountered when going around curves. When you go uh, to the left, when the vehicle goes to the left, your body sways to the right. Again, centrifugal force is important because it tends to overcome both friction and gravity, so speed becomes a controlling factor. And again, because you can control speed, you can control the effects of centrifugal force. And finally, let's take a look at inertia. Inertia is the tendency of matter to remain at rest or to continue in a fixed direction unless affected by an outside force. Breaking through the tires and creating friction is one way to control an inertia, and another way is to strike another object. Okay, how do we get the natural laws to work with you and for you? It's important to slow your bus down to the slowest speed before turning because the tires lose their grip and you will lose traction. The grip of the tires must have cornering traction and braking during a turn can exceed the available traction. Braking during a turn destabilizes the suspension causing the tall bus to tilt toward the outside of the turn. 
All of these natural laws are always affecting the bus and increasing your speed accentuates these forces. Let's talk about the effects of friction on stopping. Friction is a resistance to motion between two bodies. It is an ally to the school bus when starting and stopping, but can be an enemy to the engine, drivetrain, and other moving parts. With only 40 square inches per tire between you and the road, good brakes and tires are essential to stopping the bus. Road surfaces are another factor in friction, and hard surface roads offer more friction than dirt and gravel, with dry being better than wet, and wet being better than snow. Let's consider the effects of gravity on stopping. Gravity is the force that pulls all objects toward the center of the earth. You're going to notice gravity when going up or down a hill in your bus. Uphill, gravity has a retarding effect, and the power of the engine must overcome that. Downhill, Gravity creates a speeding up, and the brakes must be applied to keep the school bus under control. Use a lower gear and slow down so a fairly light, steady use of the brakes will keep you from speeding up. So, some discussion questions. When you doubled your speed, how long will it take to stop? And the answer is four times as long. Again, kinetic energy does not develop in direct proportion to speed. When you double your speed, the kinetic energy is multiplied by four. Continuing with some discussion questions, when driving a bus, when do you encounter centrifugal force? In driving a motor vehicle, this force is encountered when you go around curves. Specifically, as an example, when curves go to the left, your body sways to the right. What will stop inertia? Well, applying the brakes, but another thing that's going to stop inertia is striking another object. Okay, let's talk about braking distance. Braking is an artificial force that is applied to stop movement. This requires two applications, friction between the tires and the road, and friction between the brake shoe or pad and the brake drum or disc. The further a tire skids and more heat is produced, there will be less stopping power. Realization and reaction time for stopping the bus is proportional to the speed, and when speed is doubled, braking distance increases four times. Reaction time for braking averages three quarters of a second. With hard, late braking, the driver manages traction poorly and risks skidding, and there is a danger of student injury inside the bus. Review questions, what, was, what is your reaction time when braking? Again, the average reaction time is about three-fourths of a second. And why is hard, late braking dangerous? Well, here are some reasons. The driver manages traction poorly and risks skidding. There is a danger of student injury inside the bus. And there is a danger of the vehicle from behind skidding into the bus. Space cushion in front of the bus reduces the need for hard braking. Let's talk about seat adjustment. A properly adjusted seat will let you get the maximum visibility from your mirrors and out your windshield. So before adjusting your mirrors, make sure that your seat is in a comfortable position. One of the important things is the height. To prevent cutting off circulation in your legs, adjust the seat so that there is no pressure against the bottom of your thighs when you press the accelerator. Once you get your seat adjusted, then you can move the mirrors to get the best view around the bus. Okay, let's talk about mirror adjustment. The driver of a school bus that has been involved in an accident will most often say to the authorities that they just didn't see it. This is a truth because driving the bus on a daily basis has become routine. You must consciously scan the mirrors for areas of risk and the improper adjustment of them can occur for at least two primary reasons. One would be that the manufacturers of the school bus use different designs for mounting the mirrors, and the other one is that drivers should be aware of what they are looking for in their mirrors, and this, as well as proper adjustment, should be a part of the training program. For mirror adjustment guidelines, the inside flat mirror or overhead mirror should be adjusted so that the driver can view the top of the rear window in the top of the mirror. You should be able to see all of the students, including the top of the students right behind you, and the passenger side window should be visible, but you will not be able to see below the window level. 
The crossover mirrors should be adjusted so that you can see the entire area in front of the vehicle as well as the front bumper. The outside flat mirrors are located at the top of the side mirrors and are the only true mirror on the outside of the bus. These mirrors should be adjusted so that you can see 200 feet or about four bus lengths behind the bus and to the sides of the bus. You should see the rear wheel well as well as one lane of traffic on either side of the bus. The outside lower convex mirrors are located under the outside flat mirrors. These mirrors should be adjusted so you can see the entire area to the rear of the bus along the sides. You should also be able to see at least one traffic lane on either side of the bus. Let's talk about some key principles in mirror usage. The key to using your mirrors is to check them quickly and consistently. You should check your mirrors every five to eight seconds and before you make a lane change or change your position in traffic. Do not focus on the mirrors too long or you're going to miss the action going on ahead. And again, scan back and forth between mirrors as you're checking them. The convex mirrors make objects appear smaller and farther away and you should be aware that this could make the situation while driving a, a little different. Remember, even with all the mirrors on the bus, you will still have blind spots unless you move around in the driver's seat, commonly known as rocking and rolling. So some discussion questions here. What do you need to see on the outside, upper left and right flat mirrors? Answer, you should see 200 feet or four bus lengths behind the bus. You should be able to see the side of the bus. You should be able to see the metal wheel well above the tire, the rear tires. Another question, what do you need to see in the outside lower left and right convex mirrors? You should be able to see the entire area to the rear of the mirror along the side of the bus. You should be able to see at least one traffic lane on either side of the bus. How often do you need to check your mirrors? Check them at least every five to eight seconds and before you change lanes or change your position in traffic. So far we've talked about natural forces, braking, and the proper use of mirrors. Now we're going to talk about some basic school bus handling skills. The first thing we're going to talk about is tracking. Tracking is defined as the relationship between your rear tires and your front tires. The longer the wheelbase is on the bus, the greater the danger of the rear tires over tracking. A sharper turn and a longer wheelbase will have a large effect on the amount of over tracking. You should also be aware of tail swing and front swing when making a turn. Each bus has a turning point and it is usually the center point where the rear tires touch the ground. Let's consider a few basics about steering. First of all, grip the steering wheel with both hands and they should be in about the 9 o'clock and the 3 o'clock position on the steering wheel. Use the push-pull method to steer the bus and that is where one hand pushes and the other hand pulls. Steer wheels back into a position and do not let the steering wheel spin back into position. Some discussion questions. What is tracking? The position of the rear tire in relation to the front tires when turning. Where is the turning point on the bus? It is usually at the center point where the rear tires touch the ground. And how should you grip the steering wheel? At the 9 and 3 o'clock positions. Continuing on with basic skills, let's talk about turning. Before making a turn, you should check the traffic to the front, sides, and rear of the bus and start to slow down. Give the proper signals to move the bus into the proper lane for turning. Make the turn smoothly without straining the engine and check the mirrors before and during the turn. Enter the proper lane and check the turn signal for cancellation and steer the wheels back into position. Remember to keep the front wheels straight and the brake depressed while waiting to make a turn in order to prevent a rear collision from pushing the bus into oncoming traffic. Let's talk about turning around. Ideally turnarounds are going to be done in cul-de-sacs, but in some cases you have to back from one road onto the other. You should never back onto a major roadway, so this would only be in subdivisions or less traveled roadways. First of all, be sure that all the students are on the bus before doing the turnaround. Give your brake signal well in advance of the maneuver and your bus should be one bus length ahead of the road that you're going to be backing into. 
Check for traffic in front as well as behind the bus by using the overhead mirror to look in the rear emergency door. Back slowly onto the roadway using the outside mirrors. Check for traffic and re-enter the roadway with caution. Backing skills. Back your bus only when you have no other safe way to move the vehicle. Backing is dangerous and increases your risk of a collision. If you have no choice and you must back your bus, follow these procedures. First of all, post a lookout as they can warn you about obstacles, approaching people, and other vehicles, but the lookout should not give directions on how to back. Secondly, tell the students on the bus to get quiet so you can hear the lookout. Thirdly, back slowly and smoothly. If no lookout is available, you need to set your parking brake and turn the engine off, take the keys with you. Walk to the rear of the bus to determine whether or not the way is clear. Backing at a student pickup point. Again, ideally this will be done in a cul-de-sac. First of all, you should pick up the students before backing. Watch for latecomers at all times. Remember to load before backing and back before unloading. So some discussion questions. How do you do an AM pickup turnaround? Answer, pick up the students first and then do the backing. How about a PM drop off at a turnaround? Again, back the bus first and then drop the students. So whenever you're dropping or picking up kids at a turnaround point, make sure that the students are riding on the bus when you're actually backing the bus up. How is a lookout helpful when backing a bus? They can warn about obstacles, other vehicles, and approaching people. Continuing in our discussion on how to develop driving skills, let's talk about commentary driving as a training technique. This method should be utilized in order to train bus drivers to verbalize the driving significance of critical objects or objects as they come into view. During the training, the trainer is articulating and commenting to the trainer about what they're seeing. And we use the SIPDE process. S stands for search for hazards. I is identify the critical objects or conditions, the traffic environment. P is to predict how these objects or conditions might produce conflict with your bus. Then you decide a course of action that offers the least risk of collision. And finally, execute the action that you have decided upon in time to be effective. Let's summarize and review what we have learned in Unit 3. First is to identify the importance of natural laws such as velocity, centrifugal force, and inertia and the effects that they have on the control and handling of the bus. Also the understanding of the effects of friction and gravity and speed and weight when stopping the bus, and understanding the basic handling characteristics of the bus and how to properly adjust and use your mirrors. How do you apply this training? The trainee on a daily basis should be able to drive the bus using the natural forces to their advantage. You should also be able to understand the braking procedures, the effects of speed and weight, and how to properly adjust and use the mirrors which will further your ability to handle the bus in the manner that is expected. How do we measure the performance? The trainer should do an evaluation of the trainee's ability to drive the bus during phase two of the program, which is the six hours of driving an empty bus. Trainers should document the progress of the trainer by using an evaluation instrument. The driver must successfully complete the phase prior to entering driving phase three, which is driving with students. This phase, if successfully completed, should culminate with a successful evaluation and recommendation from the driver trainer. This is Unit 4 of the Georgia Department of Education Mandated Training for School Bus Drivers. Our objective in this unit is to teach, evaluate, and improve the driver's vehicle handling skills. Our objective is to teach, evaluate, and improve the driver's vehicle handling skills. Behind-the-wheel training should be an integral part of any school system's school bus training program. The behind-the-wheel training can be accomplished in two areas. One is off the street, which involves range maneuvers, and the other is out on the public roadways. 
The items that we are going to cover will help you with handling the bus, and many of the items that we will go over will help you with your everyday driving of your personal vehicle. Our performance standard, the trainee shall be taught and the trainer should evaluate and improve the trainee's vehicle handling skills. As an overview of what we're talking about, we will be talking about exercises for behind the wheel training. We will cover the basic skills, which are tracking, positioning, lane changes, and intersections, and intermediate skills, which are backing, entering, and exiting the expressway with or without acceleration lanes and deceleration lanes, and passing. And finally, advanced skills, which are usually done in a closed course. That's going to include the serpentine, offset lane changes, right and left evasive drill, backing, right and left turns, and controlled braking. We'll also talk about a wheel drop off the road in emergency recovery, and again, additional advanced training on turning. Why is it important? The procedures that we will go over will improve the driver's vehicle handling skills while we are on the street or off street training. Once these procedures are instilled in the driver's mind, they should become second nature, and this all helps to ensure the safety of our students. For basic skills, first is tracking. Tracking is defined as the relationship between the front wheels and the rear wheels when making a turn. Buses off track, so the front and the rear wheels follow different tracks, but the track the front wheels take determine the track the rear wheels will follow. Training starts on a closed course with the trainee initially focusing on the track of the rear wheels during the turn and gradually progresses to understanding the proper positioning of the front tires. Repetition is the key when it comes to tracking and turning. Positioning. Your vehicle should be positioned in the least hazardous position. For example, when you have a choice of lanes and making your turns, start in the right-hand lane and end in the right lane. For expressway driving, stay in the right lane. Lane changes. Check your traffic, check your mirrors, signal, and most important, check your blind spot using your bottom side mirrors and rocking and rolling back and forth in your seat. These should all be quick head checks. Move over smoothly and cancel your signal once you are in the other lane. Do not change lanes in a curve or intersection and try to maintain your speed. And finally, intersections. On the approach, have your foot ready to brake. When entering an intersection after you've come to a complete stop, Use the 689 rule for judging safe, safe traffic clearance. In crossing at an intersection, there should be a six second gap between the bus and approaching vehicles. In making a right turn, there should be eight seconds between the bus and approaching vehicles. In making a left turn, there should be nine seconds between the bus and approaching vehicles. Always yield to pedestrians and yield to other traffic. Now let's do a quick review of our basic skills with some questions and answers. First of all, what is tracking? Tracking is the relation of the rear wheels to the front wheels in making a turn. What is the least hazardous position when making a right turn? Turning into the right lane, right lane to the right lane. What is the most important procedure to remember when making a lane change? Check your blind spot. Again, this is a quick head check. Make sure you've checked it and it's clear before you smoothly move over into the other lane. What is the 689 rule? Six seconds between the bus and approaching traffic at an intersection. Eight seconds between the bus and approaching traffic when making a right turn. Nine seconds between the bus and approaching traffic when making a left turn. Now let's look at some intermediate skills. Backing. Positioning of your bus is important when backing. Back only when necessary and never back into a major roadway. Use all mirrors, right and left sides, overhead, and even your crossover. Determine the apex of the turn so rear wheels can be used to pivot at this point. The trainee backs too fast, they're not using all mirrors. Do not use one mirror longer than two seconds. Remember, if you are turning while backing, your front end is moving towards something as well, 
so you must glance at the front as well as your side and rear mirrors. Drivers need a reliable person to assist with backing, or drivers need to walk to the rear of the bus if they are on the vehicle by themselves. Entering with an acceleration lane, you signal, check your traffic, speed up while in the acceleration lane, and adjust your speed to merge. Check that blind spot. Enter the closest lane after passing the solid pavement line and adjust speed to the flow of the traffic. When you're entering without an acceleration lane, check the traffic, signal and accelerate to a safe speed on the ramp. If no vehicle is approaching, enter and accelerate to a normal speed. If a vehicle is approaching, find your space and merge in when it is safe to do so. Exiting with a deceleration lane, you're going to position your vehicle in the proper lane, signal, check the traffic, enter the deceleration lane. Then you slow down to the exit speed on the exit ramp. When exiting without a deceleration lane, check your traffic, signal, then brake and adjust the speed before turning onto the ramp and adjust your speed further when you're actually on the ramp. Passing. Generally, buses should not be passing on a two-lane road when you have to encroach onto the other traffic lane. Rare exceptions would be extremely slow vehicles such as farm tractors, a parked or broken down vehicle that is partially blocking the driving lane, or mail delivery or trash pickup vehicles making frequent stops. As a rule, never pass another school bus. Never pass in a no passing zone within 100 feet of an intersection or any other location where you have limited forward vision of oncoming traffic. When passing, signal, check ahead and in your mirrors to ensure clearance and minimize your length of travel into oncoming lane. Let's do a quick review of the intermediate skills with some questions. First question is, when should you back? Back only when necessary and never back into a major roadway. How should you exit from an expressway without a deceleration lane? Check the traffic, signal, brake, adjust your speed before turning to the ramp, and adjust your speed when on the ramp. Let's talk about some advanced skills. The serpentine. This should be done on a closed course or on a limited access lot. The serpentine can be done forward or it can be done in reverse. On the forward serpentine, it develops your skills in mirror usage, speed control, and steering. When doing this, you do it without stopping. The driver weaves in and out of the cones and uses hand-over-hand -hand steering. The backward serpentine develops backing while turning or in curves, and it also develops advanced mirror usage. Again, preferably without stopping, the driver weaves around consecutive cones while going in reverse and using hand-over-hand -hand steering. Offset lane change. This is set up typically at the end of the serpentine if possible. This simulates a very tight lane change like what you may have to do to work around parked cars on a street of a subdivision. Right and left evasive drill. Again, this should be done on a closed course. You begin by accelerating to 20 miles an hour, and then at the trainer's command, you move to the right or the left around an object. This is a braking and steering exercise. Do not brake while you're inside a turn. Controlled braking done in such a way to maintain a straight line. This is also done on a closed course. You accelerate in a straight line to about 30 to 35 miles an hour. On the trainer's command, you brake sharply. You release and reapply if necessary to avoid skidding. Make a smooth stop, stopping as near the end of the lane as possible. Wheel drop off and emergency road recovery, again, ideally done on a closed course. You center the edge or the road under the vehicle. You grip the wheel at three o'clock and nine o'clock, steer one quarter to one half turn to re-enter, don't oversteer, and don't scrub tires along the edge of the road. Advanced skills for turning right and left. By this point, you should be able to go out on the road and get additional practice and further advance your skills when making turns. Prepare for the turns. Check the traffic in front of the rear of the bus. 
Use the proper signals to move the vehicle into the proper lane. When making a right turn, give the proper signal, reduce the speed, position the bus in the center of the lane, check for the clear right of way. Use both outside mirrors, execute, and turn smoothly. Check your right mirror while executing the turn. Turn to the rightmost lane. Check your tail swing with your left mirror. Steer wheels back into the position without letting the steering wheel spin back into position. Making a left turn, give the proper signal, reduce the speed, position the bus in the left edge of the lane. Check for your right away. Use both outside mirrors. If it's necessary to stop, keep the wheel straight and the brake applied. To execute the turn, drive into the middle of the intersection and turn smoothly. Check your left mirror while executing the turn. Turn into the leftmost lane. Check your tail swing with the right mirror if necessary on multiple lanes. Pick up the speed and check traffic signal and move into the right lane as soon as possible. Let's do a quick review of our advanced skills with some questions and answers. First question, what is your speed for the right and left evasive drill? Answer, begin your approach at 20 miles an hour, then increase your speed. What is controlled braking? This is where you accelerate to 30 to 35 miles an hour, apply the brakes sharply, release and reapply if necessary, do not skid. As a summary, the basic skills, intermediate skills, and advanced skills of behind-the-wheel training outline how each trainee must drive in order to handle a school bus successfully. How do we apply this training? This training will improve the trainee's vehicle handling skills with the bus and the trainee's everyday driving skills. The measure of performance is how the trainee is evaluated by one or both of the following. The written test, or the road test, the trainer uses driver skills evaluation form contained within the model units.